Hello guys, welcome to Engineers Academy. Do hit that subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler. The problem says that determine the maximum vertical force P that can be applied to the bell crank so that the average normal stress developed in 10 mm diameter rod CD and the average shear stress developed in the 6 mm diameter double shared pin must not exceed 175 megapascal and 75 megapascal respectively so the problem says that the average normal stress in cd must not exceed 175 megapascal and the average shear stress in pin b must not exceed 75 megapascal we have to find this vertical force p so for that we are going to consider the free body diagram you have to cut um, this cd rod here and then we have to consider this particular part of the bell crank mechanism so now as you guys can see that when a force p is applied in the downward direction what will happen is that this point c will move towards the right and it will apply the force on cd towards the right and as a reaction this cd rod will apply the force on this mechanism towards the left so we will have if i remove erase this cd so we will have the force on c due to that cd rod in this direction so this is f c d and at b we will have b x support reaction and we will have b y so this is b y and we want to find that force p so if i apply the sum of the moment about point b if we apply the sum of the moment about point b that must be equals to zero and the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive now as you guys can see that um, this fcd is producing the counterclockwise moment about this point b so you will write fcd and the moment arm of this fcd from this point b is this distance which is if you guys consider this as a right angle triangle this is 300 so this bc this line is making 45 degree with the horizontal so this the perpendicular distance or the moment arm of fcd from that point b is 300 sine of 45 so we can say this is 300 sine of 45 this is the moment arm of fcd and it is producing the counterclockwise moment and this p force is producing the clockwise moment so you will write minus p and the moment arm of this force p from that point b is this distance this perpendicular distance which is 450 and this is equal to zero this bx and by they are passing through this point b so they are not going to produce the moment about point b so from this we can say that fcd is equal to plus 450p divided by 300 sine of 45 degrees so we can say that 450 divided by 300 sine of 45 so this gives us 2.121 fcd is equal to 2.121 p so this is the relationship between fcd and that force p similarly to find the support reaction is at b we must apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to zero towards the right is our positive x now you guys can see that bx is in the positive x and fcd is in the negative x so we can say that bx minus fcd is equals to zero and we can say that bx is equal to fcd and fcd is 2.121 p similarly if we apply the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to zero upward direction is considered to be positive now by is in the upward direction and p is in the negative direction so we can say that plus by minus p equals to zero and by is equal to p now the resultant force the resultant reaction which is applied by pin b on the bell crank mechanism is we can say that f of b is bx square plus by square under the square root we can always use the Pythagoras theorem for rectangular components. So this is 2.121 p square plus uh, p square under the square root. So we can say that p 
2.121 square plus 1 square if we take that p square common and then that will we can uh, write it outside the square root so this will be 2.121 square plus 1 square this gives us f b equals to 2.345 p now we are given that the average normal stress in c d this is equal to f c d divided by the area of rod c d and this is equal to 75 175 megapascal it must not exceed 175 megapascal so mega is 10 raised to power 6 pascal is newton per meter square now fcd is equal to 175 into 10 raised to power 6 newton per meter square multiply by the area of cd if we multiply both sides with area of cd so this will be pi divided by 4 multiplied by the diameter of cd is 10 mm so 10 divided by 1000 is 0 0.01 square this will be in meter square meter square cancelled out we will be left with the units of newton so 175 into 10 raised to the power 6 multiply by pi divided by 4 multiply by 0 0.01 square so this is we can say that fcd is 13744 newton And now from this, since we know that FCD is equal to this, so we can say that um, this is equal to 2.121P as well. And from this, we can say that P is equal to 13744 divided by 2.121. So we will divide this answer by 2.121. So this gives us P force equals to 6480 Newton. Similarly, the average shear stress in pin B, that will be equal to the shear force which is applied on that uh, pin B divided by the area of pin B. So if we consider pin B, if this is let's say pin B, so then uh, the resultant force uh, on the, the resultant reaction force of pin B is in this direction, you guys can see. And so this is the reaction force of pin B. And so the action force on pin B will be in this direction. So we can say that this is the force on pin B. So this is that FB which is equal to 2.345P. And here on the cross section we will have VB. So this is VB since pin B is subjected to double shear. So we will have shear force on this side and we will have shear force on this side. So if we apply the sum of the forces in this direction. So we will have 2VB minus FB equals to 0. And from this, we can say that VB is equal to FB divided by 2. So here we can write that VB is FB divided by 2. Or we can say 2 area of B. And this is equal to 75 megapascal. So 75 into 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter square now we know that fb is this thing right so we can say that fb is equal to 2.345p and if i multiply both sides with this 2ab so this will be 75 into 10 to the power 6 newton per meter square multiplied by 2 times this was basically fb divided by 2 right this is this is fb divided by 2 so we can write 2 in the numerator as well so this is fb into 2 ab so, <clears throat> so now the area of uh, pin b is pi divided by 4 multiplied by the dia of pin b is 6 mm so we can say 0 0.006 square in meters this will cancel out and we will have 2.345 p equals to 75 into 10 raised to the power 6 multiply by 2 multiply by pi divided by 4 
multiply by 0 0.006 square so this is 4 2 4 1 Newton and if you want to find P so 4 2 4 1 divided by 2.345 so we will divide this answer by 2.345 this gives us P force equals to 1.809, 1809, let's see, 1809 Newton. So now as you guys can see that in order to have the average normal stress in CD equals to 175 megapascal, that P force must not exceed 6480 Newton. But if we apply this much force, here at point A, what will happen is that the shear stress in pin B will exceed 75 megapascal. Because for the shear stress to be equal to this much in pin B, the P force must be 1809. So the limitation of the P force is this much. So P must not be greater than this. So we can say that this is the limitation. So we can apply this much force. So the problem says that we must find the maximum vertical force. So the maximum vertical force is, we can say that P max is equal to 1809 Newton or 1 uh, 1881 kilonewton. So this much vertical force be, must be applied at A in order to satisfy both the conditions, in order to have the average normal stress in CD less than or equal to this and the average shear stress equals to 75 megapascal. So if this much force is applied then the average shear stress must be equal to 75 megapascal and the average normal stress will be less than this. So if someone asks that what will be the average normal stress in CD then you guys will put um, this much force and uh, you, 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 you guys will find FCD for that P force that maximum P force will plug in here and using this equation you guys will be able to find the average normal stress uh, in that CD for this Pmax. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.